Today we'll pick up where we left off last time. But first I want to tell you what the purpose of our present investigation is. Uh, before we get back to the fundamental theorem of calculus and the change of variables formula. So we would, what we would like to do is analyze curves. But in order to analyze curves, you have to have the freedom to parametrize them uh, by an arbitrary parameter. What we've done so far is parametrize curves by arc length. And arc length is wonderful for theoretical investigations and geometric insights, because it is a very geometric parameter. But it turns out that it's very difficult in practice to parametrize specific curves with the arc length. One curve that's very easy to parametrize with arc length is the unit circle. Because if you think about it, you don't even have to think about it probably, probably by the very definition, the angle alpha, if we use alpha as the parameter and it's measured in radians, then by definition it's the arc length if the radius is one. So that's a poster child for uh, arc length parametrization. If this was a, a circle of radius r, then the parameter would need to be r alpha, so a, a new parameter, I would say, yeah, then s equals r alpha. Still not bad, right? So in other words, alpha would need to be s over r, and then you could if you introduce coordinates in the ambient space, which we're not doing yet, use that combination for the angle, and then you can easily parametrize the circle. So not bad. But if you consider the parabola, and you try maybe the next simplest curve, and one that we spent uh, quite a bit of time with geometrically, and everything was very nice and pretty, but if we try to analyze it with the uh, methods that we're developing, we would need to parametrize it with the arc length, and that's almost impossible. And it's a calculation that I'll show you maybe today, but probably in the next lecture. And you will see that it's a completely impractical, uh, it's completely impractical to even attempt to parametrize this parabola by arc length. It would just be a very, very complicated function. And we would just want to parametrize it by saying that x equals gamma and y equals gamma squared. That's very nice and simple. And I'll show you that if we try doing it with s, the arc length, these expressions would be crazy. So it's not practical. Using the arc length parameter is not practical. So we want to be able to use an arbitrary parameter. That will actually be our philosophy. And the point that we're at right now with respect to that philosophy is initially we were trying to introduce no parameters at all. That was Euclidean geometry and Archimedes investigations. Then we created a little bit of a compromise and we we're still not introducing coordinates in the ambient space, but we introduced a parameter on the curve. So yes, the curve now gets a coordinate system, but the ambient space still doesn't. But when we finally succumb to the pressure of using, of solving practical problems, uh, we will have to introduce a coordinate system in the ambient space. But we would still want to reserve the right to introduce an arbitrary coordinate system. That makes all the difference in the world. I don't want to say too much about it now, but when the time comes, uh, you will see that it's so very important to be able to introduce an arbitrary coordinate system and not specify any of the special features of the coordinate system. So that's what we're working towards. So our goal for today is to take a few decisive steps towards being able to analyze curves that are parametrized with an arbitrary variable, not arc length. And what are we going to do on the curve? Well, we need to do two things. We need to be able to take derivatives so we can calculate curvature and torsion and all of those wonderful geometric characteristics, and we want to be able to integrate over curves. So we can calculate the total mass of wires, total charges, total entropy, that sort of thing. So we want to be able to differentiate and integrate, but with respect to arbitrary parameters. And so the discussion that will now continue, that it, which is arithmetic, remember last time? 
We had the physical world that was here, where all of the integrals were understood in the simple physical slash geometric sense. And then we shifted gears to an arithmetic discussion and started with the fundamental theorem of calculus. And I used lowercase f to denote the derivative of capital F of x. But I think today I'll just stick with capital letters. It's <laughs> another arbitrary choice that, that I've already made and we're sticking with it. And then we'll derive the change of variables formula. It's completely straightforward, but it's, but it's important to see because it's a theorem that, or it's a fact rather, that we'll use several times today. And it's, and it's very helpful towards understanding a very critical concept, which is invariance. So let's continue with that.